So over the weekend, not one, but two mass shootings occurred within the span of 24 hours, less than a day, in fact. And this left 29 people dead and more than 50 injured. And I wish that I could say this is surprising, but unfortunately, mass shootings, you know, they're a regular phenomenon in the United States of America where we absolutely refuse to do anything about it, regardless of how frequent these things are becoming. Now, when it comes to the incidents, one of them, the one that occurred in El Paso, Texas, was in fact a white supremacist terror attack. He opened fire in a Walmart and he killed 20 people, injured 26. And the second one occurred in Dayton, Ohio, and a terrorist opened fire outside of a bar, killing nine, injuring 27, and he did all of this damage within about 30 seconds. Now, we don't necessarily know what the motivations were for the second killer, but we do know that in El Paso, Texas, he was a white supremacist who was fearful of immigrants. Now, if you're wondering why someone would go this far and take their fear of immigrants to this level and carry out a terror attack, you know, to send a message. Well, part of it is that we have a white supremacist president. That's just a fact. And as David Shanzer of The Guardian writes, Trump has launched his 2020 re-election campaign this summer by doubling down on the theme of racial and ethnic division and anti-immigrant hysteria. And as sure as the sun rises in the east, a mere month into this racially charged atmosphere, an extremist suspect, fearful of Hispanics gaining political power in Texas, decided to go kill as many Hispanics as possible at an El Paso Walmart. It is Trump-inspired terrorism yet again. The manifesto, the El Paso shooter posted online reflects that he understood and endorsed the president's political program to a T. The attack, the shooter wrote, was in response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas, echoing the president's logic that cruel conditions of confinement will deter migration. The shooter opined that his use of violence would provide a needed incentive for Hispanics to return to their home countries. His violent actions were necessary, he wrote, to save America from destruction. Now, in this terrorist's manifesto, he says that, you know, he was worried about immigrants before Donald Trump. Although, when you have the leader of this country using white supremacist rhetoric on the regular, of course, that emboldens people like this. Now, you can draw a link between Donald Trump's rhetoric and the rationale that this shooter used to carry out this attack. In fact, not too long ago, Donald Trump at a rally was using this invasion rhetoric, which was rhetoric used in the manifesto of this shooter, and listen to what one of Donald Trump's audience members shouted when he was talking about what we can do about immigrants. When you see these caravans starting out with 20,000 people, that's an invasion. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion. It's an invasion. But how do you stop these people? You can't. There's no... That's only in the panhandle you can get away with that statement. He didn't condemn it. He laughed it off, made light of it. Rather than unequivocally saying, no, violence is not the answer, Donald Trump did not do that. I was badly criticized for using the word invasion, but how do you stop these people? When the crowd member yelled, shoot him, the auditorium erupted in laughter. You can see his own supporters laugh, There was a child in the audience just absorbing all of this white supremacy, and Donald Trump couldn't be bothered to condemn that. Now, as Brandon Friedman points out, included in the shooter's manifesto are the exact same talking points, the same type of rhetoric that we see from white supremacists like Donald Trump, along with other white supremacist right-wingers. So, for example, Trump frequently uses the word invasion to describe immigration. Well, so did the terrorist. 
Trump claimed that Democrats want open borders. Well, so did the terrorists. Tucker Carlson talks about immigrants replacing us. So did the terrorist. So this isn't a coincidence. That terrorist probably already was predisposed to be racist, but when he hears his white supremacist sentiment echoed by our white supremacist president and white supremacists in the mainstream media like Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson, well, this legitimizes his thoughts. You know, if you are feeling as if you're fearful of immigrants, do you believe that that individual would be more or less likely to carry out a terror attack like the one that he did if we didn't have a president and media that was constantly fear-mongering about immigrants? It's disturbing. It is absolutely disturbing. What we are witnessing is America slowly but surely become more fascistic. We're being openly hateful against people who we deem the other and the cruelty that we exercise against them is justified because they're invading us. We're being replaced. So when we lock them in cages like animals, that's justified because if we be really cruel to them, if we carry out these terror attacks and target immigrants, well, you know, that may deter others from coming. This is what's happening. And it, it makes me nauseous to see all of this. It makes me nauseous. And, you know, now that it's convenient, of course, Donald Trump, you know, after going on a racist tirade against the squad, against Elijah Cummings, now he's condemning hatred. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. So hate has no place in our country after he's been promoting racism and throwing red meat to the base, getting them fired up by targeting members of Congress who are minorities, telling them to go back to their countries when they're American citizens. Take it from him. He knows how bad racism is. It's just laughable. He espouses white supremacist talking points on the regular. And then as soon as the rhetoric that he uses frequently manifests into violence, which is inevitable, well, then he gets to pretend to be a good guy and speak out against racism and white supremacy. Now, I'm not saying that he shouldn't condemn white supremacy and racism, because of course he should. But obviously, what needs to be the takeaway? He needs to stop fucking using white supremacist rhetoric. He needs to stop being a white supremacist. And if he actually cared about the country, he would resign in shame. I mean, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what to say. The president is a white supremacist. He uses white supremacist talking points. Mainstream news, they fear monger about immigrants, talk about how horrible the country is becoming because of immigrants. And then when these things happen, everyone acts like they're all shocked and acts like, you know, this is just so appalling. Why would anybody do this? Hmm, I wonder why somebody would do this. If you are just beaten over the head with, you know, how horrible immigrants are and how they're invading the country and how cruelty is justified because it's a form of deterrent, what do you think is going to happen? Now, predictably, you know, everyone talks about thoughts and prayers, and there's probably not going to be any action because the NRA has the Republican Party in a chokehold. And every single Republican Party politician knows that their careers depend on maintaining the status quo. And they know that if they vote for anything short of pure gun anarchy, they will have an opponent in the next election that will be bankrolled by the NRA. So they know 
that they have to toe the line. They have to talk about, you know, maybe it's mental health. Maybe it's video games. Maybe it's Jesus lacking in schools. But I mean, we all know, we know exactly what the problem is. The United States has more guns per capita than other modern countries. And we also consequentially have more gun violence. This isn't difficult to figure out. We know what it is, but it's just a matter of, will we take action? The answer is probably going to be no. And on top of that, we can't just talk about guns. We also really need to talk about white supremacy because domestic terror attacks by right-wingers, they are disproportionately the cause of politically motivated violence in this country. They carry out the most terrorist attacks. So we have to have an open and honest conversation about white supremacy in this country, and we have to talk about that and guns simultaneously. And fellow YouTuber Christo Avalis, I think, put it best. We need to have this holistic discussion. The discussion cannot just be about white supremacist terrorism or gun control. They have to be intertwined, because I think that's incredibly important. A, a discussion totally about white supremacist terrorism without a talk about gun control doesn't remove a weapon from the people who want to do harm. Conversely, talking about gun control in a sanitized environment, aka all these individuals are shooting people, and we have to stop the individuals from shooting people, fails to recognize the, the deep context here. That's exactly it. We have to take white supremacy very seriously. So when we hear the president and a Fox News pundit Using white supremacist language and talking points and rhetoric, we have to call it out and we have to call it what it is. White supremacy. We can't beat around the bush. You have to name it and you have to shame it. Call it out. This is our responsibility. On top of that, what we have to do is whenever our peers vocalize concerns about immigrants, whenever they parrot talking points that they hear from the president and Fox News, we have to educate them. Because it's more convenient to blame immigrants and blame all of your economic problems on them than to actually really diagnose the problems in this country accurately. So I don't know what to say. Like everyone, you know, my heart is broken. And it's just, it's not shocking. I wish I could say that it's shocking that this occurred, but it's not shocking. It's shocking to nobody. You know, um, mass shootings in this country, they're inevitable. You know, they're as inevitable as the sun coming up the next day. The question is, when are we going to take action? The answer is, who knows?